right, so uh, we're going to go ahead and get started. <laughs> yeah? So welcome to the 2019 Stellar Summit. This is the fourth year that we're putting this on. And I just want to get a quick show of hands of how many of you are new to the Stellar Summit this year. Wow. OK. Well, let me just give you a quick overview, because Tony and I specifically crafted this conference based on what we like in conferences. And that is a focus on networking. That is why we cap the tickets at a low amount, so everyone gets to know each other. And all the speeches and all the presentations today are all going to be action-packed. There's not going to be any fluff at all, and you will be guaranteed to go out of each session learning something and taking notes. And so we're going to be hanging out. We're going to be having lunch. We're going to be partying every night. And by the end of the Seller Summit, we will all be good friends. And that is the goal. <laughs> so one thing I really like about running this event, and we've been doing this since 2016, is that I've got to see a lot of people who have come to evolve over time. So some guys like Dean, is Dean in the audience here? He came here with nothing, and then now he has a seven-figure business. And there's a lot of stories like that. And so a quick show of hands, how many of you out there are making over $100,000 a year in e-commerce? Wow, OK, that's like almost every. What about over $500,000 a year? OK, wow. How about over a $1 million a year? OK, that's pretty awesome. And Amazon just put out these statistics. And over 200,000 people surpassed $100,000 in revenue on Amazon this past year. Over 50,000 passed 500,000. And the number of seven-figure Amazon sellers increased by 20%. And I'm really proud of the fact that a number of you guys here in the seven-figure portion are here at this event. And over 900,000 new jobs were created because of all of us in this room. And over the past year, Amazon has continued its insane growth. Uh, over 30%. And that's just Amazon, right? A lot of us here are also selling on our own shops. Quick show of hands, how many of you are, are selling on your own websites or other channels outside of Amazon? OK, great. Uh, I actually went to great lengths to get this data. Uh, this is from Andrew Udarian's State of the Merchant. He takes a survey of six, seven, and eight figure merchants every single year. And I actually promised him, and I don't know where Andrew, if you're in this room, Andrew, OK, he's right there, OK. I promised him that I would not make fun of him on stage, as I normally do every single year, in return for the right to use this data. But people who aren't selling on Amazon, the average revenue per store was $2.9 million. The average revenue growth was an insane 35.9%. The average gross margins were 45%. You can compare your own numbers with your own store with these numbers, because these are all averages here. The net margins were around 18%. And the most effective marketing channel this past year was Amazon ads. And the least effective one was Facebook ads, surprisingly. And more on that later. I'll, I'll talk about why that is the case a little bit later. But everyone here is just doing really well. But on the flip side, the growth on Amazon, at least, has been slowing over the years. Now, it grew a lot in 2018, over 30% overall. But the first quarter of 2019, believe it or not, Amazon only grew 16%. So Amazon's slowing down. Right? And according to all the analysts, Cooper Smith, Gardner, L2, Amazon is saturating the core market in the United States. Now, this was taken from the State of the Merchant also. The people who took part in that survey, their Amazon growth slowed from 41% over to 35.5%. And the people who don't sell on Amazon witnessed increased growth from 30 to 36.5%. Now, all the analysts are saying that Amazon is, is undergoing a transformation right now. It's not about rev revenue growth anymore. It's more about getting more money out of their existing customers. All right, we've seen this firsthand a couple of months ago. Anybody here sell emu oil, Carol? <laughs> Hope you don't mind that I'm using you as an example here. But uh, you know, this is maybe three or four months ago. Amazon started putting these pop-ups up with their own private label products. And you know, this is Carol's product here. Right above the buy box, there was Amazon's private label product at 25% of the price. Right? And of course, when you see something that's that cheap, what are you going to buy? You're going to buy Amazon's private label product. I was looking for trash bags the other day, uh, three months ago. And I was checking out with these Glad trash bags. And then this pop-up comes up on my phone 
with Amazon's private label version at 25% off. And I actually ended up buying Amazon's version because what do I care, right? A trash bag is a trash bag. I'm going to throw it away anyway. Now, it's a good thing Amazon stopped doing this, but it just goes to show that Amazon's really trying to increase their revenue right now because growth is definitely slowing. Three months ago also, Amazon, if you were a first party seller, you might have had all of your orders all of a sudden stop. And that is because Amazon is pushing first party sellers over to the third party platform, presumably because it's more efficient and they are more able to save money that way. And all these things always come all of a sudden, right? They're doing all this testing and you never know what's gonna happen next. But just because Amazon is slowing, that has not stopped the Chinese people. Uh, I, think, <laughs> I think last year I said that, uh, I think the statistic was like 25% of the top sellers uh, are, for, are based in China. This year it's close to 40%. And this is actually all accurate data because when you list in Spain, France, Italy, UK, and Germany, you actually have to list your company of origin. So this is like actual data. 39% of the top sellers are based in China. And US, it's not the case, but it's estimated that over 40% of the top sellers are from China. Now, I'm not racist, and I don't know if there's any correlation here, but the number of counterfeits has increased as well as the Chinese sellers has increased. I think it's just coincidence. But one in three products in certain categories, like headphones and clothing, now have a review claiming that a product is counterfeit. So there's definitely a counterfeit problem. <laughs> Uh, those of you guys who have been to the Seller Summit every year uh, know that I always talk about the Girl Scouts. I'm actually not going to be talking about selling Girl Scout cookies today. Uh, but I do want to just mention that uh, you know, we did sell 250 boxes in a couple days again. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, this past year, we did something different. We decided to produce videos simulating like the office, uh, you know, basically day to day, the board meetings, and, and how basically my daughter formulated her strategy for selling these cookies. But my point here is that even my daughter experienced piracy firsthand. <laughs> These are all the same daughter, by the way. We just had different roles, and she was playing all these different roles. Hey, Ruth, come check this out. What's going on? According to Jungle Scout, Girl Scout cookies get 575 sales per month, and the average number of reviews on the front page is less than 100, and there's even a distribution of revenue. Oh my gosh, this looks like a good product to sell on Amazon. Forget the Girl Scouts. Let's do FBA. Should we take action? Wait a sec. This seller is selling Thin Mints for $3 a box. How is that possible? How can they make a profit? Hey, wait a second. Those aren't Thin Mints. They're Jungle Mints. What the heck are Jungle Mints? Let me take a look. Hmm. It looks like a cheap Chinese knockoff from a company called Jungle Scouts. Look at that silly person on the box. Man, does he look ridiculous. Chinese sellers are terrible marketers. I wonder if this Greg Mercer guy is for real. Here's a public service announcement. At Rena Cookie Corp, we only sell 100% genuine Girl Scout cookies. So make sure you buy from me. Thank you for your support. So not as all lost, there's a lot of counterfeits on Amazon, but they're gonna be announcing or launching, I should say, Amazon Project Zero. Uh, it's still application only at this point, but supposedly in sometime in the near future, you should be able to control who sells your products online. And so I'm anxiously awaiting to this because in theory, at least, this should hopefully solve the piracy problem or at least help mitigate it. But here's the thing. When I think about how to prevent ourselves from being counterfeited, the obvious solution here, and everyone's been talking about this, is starting your own brand, right? Starting a very strong brand so that people will want the real thing. And this term brand gets thrown around a lot, right? The dictionary definition is really just like stamp or a trademark, but what does it really mean to establish a strong brand? And so I just wanted to give you a quick example. This is my son, and he's really into Pokemon cards. Anyone who has kids into Pokemon cards? Yeah. Well, here's the thing about my son. He, he likes to play the game, and he likes the cartoon, 
but he doesn't, I don't think he really cares about the actual cards. And I can tell just by the way he holds them because I used to collect baseball cards and I never opened the wrapping. And if I did, I would put it immediately in a protective sleeve so that the corners weren't being bent. If you notice the way he's holding them right now, the cards are bent and the corners are already like, so we, this has zero resale value whatsoever. He just likes to play the game. And the thing about Pokemon cards is that uh, it's expensive. It's like 50 bucks for like a pack of 20 or something crazy like that, right? And so what does any Asian parent do? They look for a counterfeit, right? <laughs> so I went on Amazon and I found this, 100 cards for only 10 bucks. And I was like, all right, 100 bucks, 10 bucks, if he doesn't like them, whatever, right? So I went ahead and bought them. And I was actually surprised at the quality. Clearly these cards fell off the truck on the way to the store. And so I gave them to my son thinking, cool, you know, I just saved myself a lot of money. He took one look at the cards and he was like, I don't want these. What are these? I'm like, they're Pokemon cards. They look exactly like what you got. And he's like, no, daddy, uh, I, I'm gonna use the real thing, right? And so, you know, I wasted 10 bucks here, but he could tell the difference and it mattered to him even though he only plays the game. And so that made me think, I'm like, I couldn't tell the difference. What makes a really good brand that you refuse to counterfeit? What are the components of a brand that are uncounterfeitable, if that's a, if that's a word? And so I thought about some of the companies I love. Anyone recognize this company? Yeah, it's Tom's, Tom's Shoes, right? And the reason why, at least my wife, she's really into Tom's Shoes, she will never buy counterfeit Tom's Shoes, at least I don't, I don't think you'd buy counterfeit, yeah, uh, <laughs> is because there's a great story, right? Every pair of shoes that are purchased, they actually donate a pair to kids all across the world. And they've given over 70 million shoes to kids who are less fortunate. And it's, it's things like these, these stories like these that really make me want to support that company and not counterfeit them. Uh, Skechers tried to do something similar, knocked off the exact shoes and they called them Bobs. They did the same thing. It was a complete failure. Now they're donating the proceeds for dogs and cats, but it just goes to show you that you just can't knock off an idea if it has some sort of meaning towards it. And that is why I invited Craig Gentry to talk. He's given the closing keynote. What's up, Craig? Uh, he runs Got Fresh Breath. Uh, he sells mouthwash, and he's, he makes a killer business out of just two SKUs. Uh, that's not why I asked him here, obviously, even though he has really great smelling breath. <laughs> uh, but he's, everything that he's done has a purpose. And all the businesses and all of his proceeds have gone to help others. And it's an amazing story. Be sure to check out the closing keynote. Now, another business that I will probably never cheat on is Trader Joe's. And the reason why is because long ago, there was this story that I heard about this 89-year-old man. He was snowed in, couldn't get his groceries, so he called Trader Joe's and placed an order. And what ended up happening is he said he couldn't get there, and the Trader Joe's cashier was like, hey, we will deliver the food to you, and they ended up delivering it to him free of charge. And for some reason, every time I step into a Trader Joe's, that story of customer service really hits me. And it just makes me really like Trader Joe's. Why do we shop on Amazon? Realistically, right? It's because we have the ability to return anything that we buy, right? It's a very safe purchase. And Amazon has created this customer service policy over the years, and that is why we all shop there. And so absurd customer service is another reason why you are loyal to a company, which is why I all encourage you to go visit the Gorgeous booth out there. Uh, Gorgeous is a customer service tool that I've been using maybe for the past eight months or so. What's great about the tool is that it consolidates everything. All of your social media, all of your email into one platform, and then all of your order information is on the side. So you can answer all of your customer service inquiries all from a single interface. So if you guys are right now like managing all your customer service across different platforms, I encourage you to stop by their booth. The other thing that always owns me is content. Uh, I found this picture, it's, it's very appropriate actually, it's, it's also holding my wallet. Uh, content makes you do crazy things, it, it really does. And I would argue that if you're trying to start a brand, you have to be creating content today, you have to. Because it makes you crazy, it makes you go to store to store looking for a dress, a princess dress, where like your daughter can tell if it's a knockoff or not, so you gotta buy the real thing, but they're sold out because the movie's really popular. And then you gotta go out and you gotta find a Prince Charming outfit to, to match it all over the place, and again, you gotta get the genuine thing, otherwise she doesn't, and it's all because of content. 
And then don't get me started uh, you know, on the amusement parks. This is all part of Disney's master plan. Uh, I waited two and a half hours to take a picture with a fake princess multiple times during that trip. And I, I thought this was funny because I immediately saw these wristbands and my, my kids were like, oh, cool, wristbands. And I, I immediately thought of handcuffs. Uh, <laughs> so when I was at Disney. But the key point here is we don't buy from businesses. We're not loyal to businesses. We're actually loyal to humans. Right? This is why networking is so important at this event, because we are loyal to people. And so the more that you can humanize your business, the more successful you'll be, and the more loyal your customers will be to you. Which brings me to my next story. And this is, this is a really good case study. So this is a picture of my kids. Every single year at their elementary school, they have a small business fair, where they have the opportunity to create their own products and then sell them to people for a period of about three hours live. Right. And so my kids created these entrepreneurship t-shirts, which are meant to inspire kids to start their own business. And they were so excited about their product, they manned their booth, this is a picture of their booth. And when we got there and the fair started, they thought that the product would sell itself. So they just sat there in the booth in their chairs. I think my daughter brought a book, she was reading her book, and you know, people would just walk by and they weren't buying their product. And they ran to me and they were really discouraged. They were like, hey, how come, how come no one's buying these shirts? They're, they're so good. They're, they look better than some of the other products that are at the small business fair, because these are really professional. They did a really good job. And I told them, well, so I, I, was, I was trying not to be a helicopter parent, so I was just kind of off to the side and watching them. And they say, hey, what, what should we do? And so I kind of just observed from afar what they were doing, and they were just sitting there. I was like, you got to stand up and you got to sell your product, because if you don't, no one's going to buy it. And so they started standing up, they started drawing people in, and they made their first sale. Okay? And it was the sweet, you know, everyone here knows how the first sale is the sweetest. But here's what happened next. They came running to me, and I had already won outside because I, I didn't want to be a helicopter parent again. So they ran outside, they're like, hey, daddy, daddy, we got our first sale, we got our first sale. Both of them came up to me. And that's when I transformed into someone that I never thought that I would transform into. <laughs> an angry Asian parent. <laughs> so they came up to me, they left the cash box wide open, no one was manning the booth, and they came and ran to me and said, hey, we got our first sale, we got our first sale. Uh, so I told them to go back, get their butt back there and start selling again, and uh, th things were going well. They were making sales and whatnot, but then what happened next is they were standing up for a long time and they're like, oh, my, my legs hurt. My legs hurt. You know, I, I don't think I can stand anymore. Can we just take a break? Can we take a break? And that's when my wife became an angry Asian parent. <laughs> I was in labor for 28 hours and then so, okay, they sucked it up. They sucked it up. Um, what was funny about this is they, they came to me to complain and this time, like my, it was only one of them came, so someone was manning booth, and my son took the cash box over, right? So no one would get the cash. But what ended up happening is the cash box was with him, so that we couldn't give change at the actual booth. And so I told him to get back there and uh, <laughs> and start selling, uh, resume selling. And so the, the small business fair went really well, and uh, they were just really excited towards the end. And you know, towards the end they were they came up to me and they were so excited. And then I, I. I don't know why, it's just, maybe it's just uh, in my blood or whatnot, and this is what I said, and so they went back and, and continued selling. But regardless, it was such a good experience that we actually decided to launch a real business out of this. And uh, so this site's actually already up. I actually haven't tested the, uh, the actual shopping cart yet, but the products are up and that sort of thing, and uh, we're actually, I guess, officially launching it here at the Seller Summit. <laughs> Uh, but we're, what we're trying to do is we're trying to uh, implement all the things that we just talked about, right? It has a story, it has a pur purpose, and that sort of thing. And uh, this is their mission statement. Kids these days, everyone thinks that we are too lazy and entitled, that we are ungrateful for everything that has been given to us. Well, my brother and I don't take anything for granted. A kid in charge, our goal is to empower the youth of America to take charge of their lives and take responsibility for their actions. The unemployment rate for college graduates is going up every year, and my brother and I refuse to be part of this trend. We know that a college degree does not equal money and success, which is why we started KidInCharge.com. 
Now, it wouldn't be right to talk entrepreneurship without walking the walk. As a result, we are documenting our entire journey on YouTube. You'll get behind the scenes footage on our board meetings and business decisions. You'll experience the highs and lows of running a business firsthand. And while you're at it, brush a line of shirts, support our cause, and empower your kids to be future leaders and entrepreneurs today. Thank you for your support! So uh, I, I just thought I'd call out Matthew Pope. Uh, he just recently dropped out of college uh, to pursue e-commerce, and I encourage you guys to... Uh, <laughs> and for everyone viewing the virtual pass, stay in school, okay? I still encourage everyone to go to college. And, but yeah, uh, if, if my 9, 11-year-old kid can do it, uh, and so can you. <laughs> oh. Matthew Pope, everyone. Yeah. We just met last night, by the way. <laughs> All right, so a lot of the sessions here for the Seller Summit are going to be designed to uh, teach you how to make a connection with the customer. So first we got Scotty V. Anyone here not know who Scotty V is? Scott Volker. I call him Scotty V. He's going to be talking about the four pillars of building a successful brand and winning over the competition. Mike Jackness, good buddy of mine. He runs the Ecom Crew podcast and Ecom Crew. He's going to talk about the life cycle of marketing how to extract the maximum value from your customers, all the way from when they come in as a cold customer, all the way until after they make a purchase. Alexandra Edelstein of Clavio is going to teach you how to properly segment and personalize your email list. One thing that I've noticed with talking to a number of you is I've noticed a lot of you guys just blast a monolithic list about your offers and that sort of thing. And that's actually not the most efficient way to run your email list. So if you're doing it that way, I encourage you to attend Alexandra's talk. Uh, Matt Sanaki, uh, he is the brother of Drew Sanaki who spoke at the first Seller Summit. He is going to be talking about how to actually design and craft your emails for maximum conversions and optimal delivery. Uh, believe it or not, when you send out an email now, not all of your emails make it to the inbox. And so there's certain things that you have to do to make sure you even make it to the inbox in the first place. Uh, Ezra Firestone of Smart Marketer, he's going to be talking about Facebook chatbots, how to leverage Facebook messenger marketing, you know, for sales and profit. And Messenger is just another platform to get in touch with your customer, just like email. And I encourage you to visit all these companies here, which I use all these companies here. Privy, I use to manage my email capture forms. Uh, they also have cart saver pop-ups, abandoned cart pop-ups. And they actually have like a, a mini email service as well that will handle all of your autoresponders for you, the, all the basic ones. BigCommerce is one of my favorite fully hosted shopping carts. And the reason for that is a fully featured cart right out of the box. They don't try to nickel and dime you. Clavio is like the de facto standard for e-commerce uh, email marketing right now, and I use them with my online store. Drip is my favorite email marketing for my blog. They have superior tagging and automation features, and that's why I, I, I use Drip for my blog and Clavio for my store. And PickFu is actually a lesser known company that I just started using uh, for the past year. It is a way to get feedback about anything related to your e-commerce business within like 10 minutes. So for example, if I have two photos that I'm considering using on Amazon and I want to know which one to use, I can put these up on PicFu and get real people to tell me which one to actually use on my listing within 15 minutes. And so I think PicFu is actually giving out free polls. So if you want an unbiased opinion about your website, just go over to the PicFu booth. You can get real people giving an opinion about your website within 15 minutes. So I encourage you guys to visit all these booths out there. And of course, in order to stay competitive, you actually have to build competitive products as well. And so Michael Paulson of Jungle Scout is going to teach us how to get the best suppliers with a technique that I, I don't think a lot of people here are actually using. So I, I apologize for being a little mysterious there, but if you're curious, uh, go attend Michael's session. Nathan Resnick, he spoke last year as well. He is my go-to guy when it comes to product sourcing. And this actually comes at a good time because Trump just raised the tariffs to 25% across the board. And Nathan is going to teach you how not to pay these tariffs legally. L legally, right, Nathan? Are you, are you in here? <laughs> legally, yeah. So he's got a great, great way to avoid tariffs. And we actually have this year a professional services expert panel. And basically, these are all the experts on sourcing. So Pam is going to cover freight forwarding, answer all your questions. Steven is the, is the resident lawyer. 
He's really familiar with patents, uh, copyrights, and that sort of thing. And he's, he has his reputation for actually shutting down Chinese factories. So I encourage you to ask him about that. Uh, Nathan Resnick, he's going to answer all the product sourcing questions. And then Greg Mercer, he runs a gigantic e-commerce business in addition to Jungle Scout. And he'll answer any of your questions about actually selling on the platform. And I encourage you to visit all these booths out there. And once again, all these services are companies that I admire and use for the most part. So Payoneer, if you guys are doing any international business whatsoever, you'll notice that if you're in the US, you'll have to pay the exchange rate twice to get your money. And you can avoid doing that by using a service like Payoneer. HYC Logistics has been a longtime supporter of the conference. They are a freight forwarding company. And right now, they actually just recently slashed their prices. So I encourage you to go visit their booth. Uh, Jungle Scout, they introduced this really cool feature called the Supplier Database. So I encourage you to go to their booth and ask them about that. Total TM is Steven's company. If you have any issues with copyright, theft, or anything along those lines, he is actually running a booth out there. And what I like about him is he's, he will always suggest the lowest cost, highest impact way to proceed with protecting your IP. Now, even though Amazon's growth is slowing, they are still projected to have 50% of overall retail in 2021. And what that means is if you're not on Amazon, you pretty much have to be on Amazon today. And so a lot of these sessions are gonna be just about Amazon as well. Brad Moss, he is the former head of Seller Central at Amazon. He's gonna be talking about the critical metrics behind creating a successful Amazon business. Trent Dersmid, I was actually surprised that there was a lot of people selling wholesale on Amazon, and it's a huge business. So I invited Trent to talk about how to build a scalable wholesale business on Amazon. What's cool about Trent is that he's created all these SOPs for his wholesale business, so that I think he only works maybe three to five hours a week on his multi-million dollar e-commerce business. Uh, Casey Goss, Viral Launch. Um, he's going to talk, a lot of things have changed in Amazon. It changes all the time, right? So he's going to give an updated account on how to drive sales and keyword research in 2019 without using giveaways, which have become less effective over the years. Once again, here are the tools of the trade here. Uh, the sales tax situation in the US is, is kind of a mess. So if you want to avoid all those headaches, you have to use a service like Avalara. They're out there. Um, what's, what's going on with the sales tax, if you guys aren't familiar, states are actually making you pay sales tax now, even if you don't have physical presence in the state. And so it's impossible to keep track of all the percentages and sales tax all across the board. So Avalara solves all that for you. Uh, Viral Launch is my favorite tool for keyword research. So if you're selling on Amazon, you got to do keyword research, which everyone needs to be doing. I encourage you to go visit their booth. Product Labs is actually Brad Moss's company. It is a consultancy for uh, seven, eight, and nine figure businesses. He knows his stuff and he has a bunch of software tools that will help you grow your Amazon business. And Jungle Scout is what I consider like the de facto standard for product research today. All right, so part of the uh, State of the Merchant Report that Andrew kindly allowed me to use here, uh, one thing I noticed is that the second largest source of traffic for e-commerce stores is paid traffic. So what that means is everyone needs to learn how to advertise and drive their own traffic. And so I mainly focused for this event on the big three, Google, Facebook, and Amazon. Amazon has grown like 25%, I think, in the past year. Google has lost a little bit of market share because Amazon's been growing, and Facebook has been holding steady. But these are the big three, right? So I invited Brett Curry to talk about Google Shopping. Basically, he's going to go through step-by-step -step on how to run your first Google Shopping campaigns. Incidentally, Google Shopping is my highest converting advertising medium around. So if you have your own store, I encourage you guys to run this type of ad first. Uh, Molly Pittman, he's, she's going to talk about Facebook ads. Remember uh, earlier in the slide I said that Facebook was the least effective marketing channel. And the reason for that is because it has changed fundamentally in the past year. And so Molly is going to talk about what is working in 2019 because things really did change a lot in just the past year. I asked Alana Wexler to fly all the way over from Australia to talk about Google Display ads. And the reason for this is people don't realize that Google Display is much larger than, than Facebook ads. And a lot of people actually are not using this medium, believe it or not. And it's, what's cool about it is you can actually use a lot of your existing Facebook creatives to advertise on the Google Display network. And a lot of people just don't know that. So I encourage you to attend Alana's talk if you want to learn more. 
Uh, Edward Ruffin of Seller Labs. Um, pardon me for saying this, Ed, but he's probably like the geekiest Amazon PPC guy I know. He literally lives and breathes this stuff. And he knows, he manages a whole bunch of accounts. He knows this stuff inside and out. He's going to talk about Amazon PPC. So it's the most effective advertising platform right now. So I encourage you to go to his talk as well. And of course, the tools of the trade, Seller Labs offers a host of tools that will help you manage your PPC campaigns and do keyword research. I use Ignite to manage my PPC campaigns. I encourage you to go over to their booth and check it out. Scope is a reverse ASIN tool, lookup tool, which basically allows you to figure out what keywords your competitors are ranking for and then use those keywords as part of your Amazon pay-per-click campaigns. Now, do you ever feel like, and I know a lot of you guys here were in the mastermind, do you ever feel like you're always juggling too many things, like you don't have enough time, you're overwhelmed with all the tasks and your to-do list? Even just coming out of the mastermind yesterday, I was blown away with the number of things I need to do. And I encourage you guys to stop juggling all these things by yourself and learn how to, to scale yourself, right? And so I, I asked Bill D'Alessandro, I'm glad you made it, Bill, <laughs> to come talk about how to clone yourself. Bill uh, is known as the Procter and Gamble of North Carolina. He's really good at delegating and building a team. So I asked him to come talk about how to expand yourself beyond just yourself. Because I know a lot of people here are just running their business by themselves. Dana, um, she is the queen of efficiency. So I asked Dana to come talk about how to unlock your profit potential, how to improve your gross margins. A lot of us are like chasing revenue because it's a vanity metric, right? The more you make, the more you can brag about it. But what's fundamentally most important is your profit. And that's what Dana is going to talk about. So in terms of outsourcing, uh, I've used all these companies and they're great. So Second Office is a service that will help you find a Filipino VA. And Second Office is actually how we found our Filipino VA that we've had for the past year, and she is amazing. She does all of my podcast editing, video editing. She helps with the e-commerce store. Amazing. What's cool about Second Office is that they, will actually, they have an office there. And in the Philippines, since this is a third world country, there's often brownouts and loss of internet. All, their, all the VAs actually go to their office, so you're guaranteed uptime on internet and power. Your Tasker is a company that I just started using three months ago. They approached me. And the way they got me is they offered to do a free Amazon account audit, which they're actually offering to all attendees here. Basically, they'll go over all of your products with a fine-tooth comb and tell you, you know, low-hanging fruit ways for you to improve. And I actually, at that time, I hadn't been you know, monitoring my Amazon listings as well as I could have liked. And just this little audit that they did, which was free, allowed me to, they found some things which I changed. And they were careless mistakes on my part. Like, I should have not have made these mistakes. But nonetheless, they were there. And business has been up over 30% since these very minor changes that I made. Uh, and so your task, or what they are, is they are a, uh, a full service e-commerce agency. All the employees are employed by them. And they are trained by them. So they are guaranteed to know what they're doing as soon as you hire them. FreeUp is a marketplace of freelancers that specialize in e-commerce. And I know Scott Volker has used these guys in the past. And he has nothing but good things to say about them. If you want a freelancer, if you have a project that you need done, I encourage you to go check out FreeUp. Because everyone's there is specialized in e-commerce. And then FE International, longtime sponsor of the event. If you're thinking about buying or selling your business, I encourage you to go visit their booth. And uh, I don't know if you've met the team yet. Tony and I were the founders and the, were the hosts of the event. If you have anything good to say about the event, feel free to stop by, grab Tony and I, and, and just let us know that you're having a good time. If you have bad things to say about the event, then I encourage you to talk to this knife-wielding lady here. She may or may not be holding the knife, but Liz Saunders helps out every year with the event. And if you have any logistical issues and you don't know where to go, uh, feel free to pull aside Kristen Jones and ask her any questions that you might have. All right, so one thing I'm really excited about uh, Greg Mercer, Scott Volker, Mike Jackness, and I, we recently launched this Shark Tank-like show called The Five Minute Pitch. And it's a show where 32 contestants compete for the chance to win $50,000 in prizes. And if you haven't been following the show, we actually narrowed it down to the final four. And so after the event is over, we have a room up, uh, downstairs, and the final four are going to pitch their product to the Seller Summit attendees. And you guys are going to actually help vote to narrow it down to the final two. And then the judges are going to vote for the winner, and we're going to hand out a $50,000 check on stage. So that's after the event. Uh, you guys have probably received this card. 
Uh, we're actually going to be giving away a lot of prizes at this event. But the way to enter is you actually have to go visit all the booths and have these marked off. And if you have the entire card, you can turn it in. And that is an entry into the raffle. We're giving away like an iPhone 10, among other valuable prizes uh, that we're giving away. So uh, to close, uh, now that my kids are actually in e-commerce, uh, they actually wanted to come to the event. But unfortunately, uh, they could not make it. But I did ask them to make a quick little video for the attendees. My daddy asked me to say a few words for the Seller Summit attendees since I could not be there this year. Don't get me wrong, I really wanted to come. But the event was sold out three months ago and Mrs. Anderson wouldn't let me have a ticket. Just between you and me, I think Mrs. Anderson needs to loosen up. Anyway, I just wanted to share some numbers with you. At my school's first business fair, my brother and I made $390. Not bad for a first timer, eh? I think I even caught up to Mr. Udarian. Everyone here is an inspiration to me and I hope to meet you all someday. Thank you for your support. <laughs> so um, that's all I had to say. If you guys haven't signed up for a round table, I encourage you to go sign up. Uh, what a round table is, it's your chance to talk to a speaker after they've given their talk in case you have any follow-up questions. And it's a, a more small, uh, small environment. I think there's only 10 people at a table, and so you can get an in-depth take if you have any additional questions about the details of the talk. But I'm really excited for today's event, and uh, I hope you guys all have a good time. Thank you.